Good morning. So, what in background lang about dun sa seminar namin ni Sir JC today? Uh, nang galing to from dun sa tinatenda namin na workshop. So, kailan yun sir? March. Mid-March, gano'n. Uh, isa siyang workshop hosted by Perk Watch and GBIF sa Philippines. So, yung workshop na yun, tinuro nila kami paano, eto, yung i-share namin sa inyo ngayon, uh, Biodiversity Data Mobilization. Okay? So, ang ginawa namin title ay Moving Collections Data or Collection Data Out of Museum Rules. Kasi ang aim ng seminar na to ay yung data held within museum sections ay mailabas natin to uh, GBI. Malalaman natin mamaya kung ano yun. So, for an outline, ay, wait lang. Part 2 na ito. Sorry, sorry. Namiss ko, nakatigil ako sa step ko. Part 2 na. Part 1, part 1 pa lang. Ang pilis. Ang pilis. Okay, part one muna. Okay, so, counting introduction about biodiversity data mobilization, then pakilala ko yun sa GBIF, naging biodiversity data capture, um, data cleaning and standardization, and pag-check ng data quality. So, una, let's define what is biodiversity data mobilization. So, it's a process of establishing an automated mechanism for sharing biodiversity data. Kasi mobilization, it means making something capable of movement. So, sa ngayon, yung ating mga data about sa, para sa amin, sa collection sa museum, nakatigil siya. Nandun siya sa drawers. Nandun siya sa mga cabinets. So, ang gusto natin, mapagalaw to and ma-share sa outside world and scientific world para magamit sa iba't ibang studies. So, let's move it, move it po. Okay, so how do we mobilize our data? So, may mga iba't ibang uh, steps. So, una, data capture, encoding from dun sa ating mga specimens or from derecho from field collections, observations. And, dilinisin natin yung data and gab meron tayong standards na susundin para sa GBIF, yun yung ating goal and yung ating uh, media. Mamaya ito i-isa-isahin natin. And then, meron sa tinatawag na metadata to describe yung ating data set. Pre-prepare din natin yun. And then, finally, upload sa GBIF. Tapos, meron pa yan yung pag-publish ng data papers na si Sir JC ang mag-discuss later. So, una muna, ano yung GBIF? So, it stands for Global Biodiversity Information Facility. So, isa siyang open data infrastructure ma-access nyo sa web and funded by governments. So, mga me may mga member states or member countries dito, nagbibigay sila ng pondo para gumalaw itong GBIF. Sa so, ngayon, ang Pilip Pilipinas ay para associate member pa lang or observing member. Hindi pa tayo, hindi tayo nagbibigay ng pera for GB, pero meron tayong some uh, uh, powers or perks para makapag-publish. So, it allows anyone anywhere to access data about uh, all types of life on Earth. And then, ang advantage niya is by encouraging and helping institutions to publish data according to common standards. GBIF enables research not possible before. So, examples dito ay yung large-scale uh, analysis ng mga species na hindi mo mga gagawa kung nasa isa ka lang lugar. Pero kapag mayroon pang platform na masishare mo or makukuha mo yung data from all over the world, meron tayong mga ana analytical studies na magagawa. So, ang isang importante dito ay institutions ang nagpa-publish. So, mag apply ang institution kung kung sila mag-publish ng data. Hindi pwede na isang tao pa lang maglalagin ka doon tapos pasok pa na pasok data. Siyempre, gusto natin na ma-check yung quality ng data. So, uh, we only allow institutions to publish. So, noong mga early this month, na-accept ang MNH as a publisher. So, target namin ay makapag-publish ng data within the year. Sana. Okay, so, sa 
Punta tayo sa GBIF sa Philippines. So, ang GBIF node or yung kumbaga parang connection ng GBIF from Philippines to the world or from uh, the world to the Philippines ay sa BMB, sa DNR. So, so far, merong 12 published datasets from Filipino publishers. And at so, ang isang magandang fact dito ay lahat yun from human observations. So, yung mga current, ah, uh, sampling data or walang specimens na na hindi katulad ng sa natural history collection specimens. So, lahat yan from direct human observations. Tapos, ang isa pa, meron 1,000, 1 million, 1, almost 1.4 million occurrence published from Philippines, pero halos 288,000 lang nang galing sa Pilipinas. So, ibig sabihin, yung mga nag-record ng data sa atin at nagpapublish sa GBIF ay galing sa iba't ibang bansa, mainly sa US. So, tingnan natin kung yung mga data na ito. So, you <laughs> halos 100% ay doon sa eBird observation. Sa eBird. Tapos meron daw, ito, nagtataka ng Sir JC, yung MCMB, UPLB Museum Flag Collection. Gulat na gulat kami kung ano yun. Kasi, sa MCMB siya, pero UPLB Museum. So, hindi yan galing sa MNH. Kasi ito lang, lately lang, na, pub, na publish na nung Herp Watch yung invasive alien na civilians in the Philippines. So, meron silang 445 sampling event na uh, data. So, para marami din dito, bukod dun sa birds, maraming ay from amphibians. So, ang gusto natin, madagdagan niya ng, ilan ang collections ng museum ay nasa almost 500,000. Gusto natin madagdag yun. So, ulit. First step, sumula muna tayo data capture and encoding. So, pwede siya direct from dun sa specimens with concerning sa natural history collection or from digitized version. So, nung nag, sa workshop namin, may exercise kami. May, binigyan kami ng pictures ng uh, herbarium sheets. Tapos, meron siyang incorporated na data. Yung nasa baba. So, maganda yung naka-digitize yung mga herbarium sheets. Kasi, kung nari kayo mga, yung mga studyante dito, diba? yung mga students, possible na matulungan nyo kami mag-digitize. Sa picture lang kami, tapos upload namin itong saan, and then uh, through a online platform or data capture software, pwede nyo namin tulungan mag-encode from sa pictures, magiging digital uh, data siya. So ano yung mga, meron mga sample softwares na pina, software na pinakunta sila sa amin, so to Symbiota, Specify, EMU, Eliza, and Grabs. Yung iba dito pwede may uh, Android app pa. Tapos pwede mong picture ng specimen, then input ka ng data. Kaso, ang mahirap dito, iba-iba sila ng format. So, paano natin yun i-standardize? Yun yung mamaya, i-discuss ko pa po. So, ano yung format nga na yun na gusto natin? Meron tinatawag na Darwin Core Format. Yun yung required para makapag-upload tayo ng data sa GBIF. So, bakit natin is a standard size? Siyempre, the main purpose of standard is to create framework ease of sharing para madali, diba? And then, data standards are rules by which data are described and recorded in order to share, exchange, understand data you must standardize before a as well as the meaning. So, yan. Ano yung mga kailangan natin standardize dun sa mga data natin? So, yung type of data, encoding scheme, format, and character encoding, mga samples ng web. Bilis na? Hindi mo masyadong mo. Ito. Merong mga ba ngayon, may nag-exist na biodiversity data standards. So, isa ilan lang to. Hindi ako masyadong familiar din dito. So, ecological data, data language, and so on. Pero, ang susundin natin for our projects, ay yung Darwin Core. Okay, so Darwin Core is a standard maintained by the Darwin Core Maintenance Group. It includes glossary of terms intended to facilitate the sharing of information of biological diversity. 
Okay, so it's providing identifiers, labels, and definitions. So, ano lang siya? List of fields and their definitions. Nasa internet to, pwede nyo puntahan itong website. Meron silang list of, kumbaga, kung nasa Excel tayo, yun yung uh, column headings. Na yun yung standard na dapat nakalagay dun sa ating uh, data. Pag mag, bago tayo mag-upload. <coughs> Sorry. Okay? So, may iba't iba pa tong sub uh, yung mga definitions based doon sa origin ng collection, uh, ng data natin, by diversity data. So, una is yung taxon for based mainly siya sa comment time checklist and, tax, and other taxonomical sources and then occurrence for dito papasok yung museum collections, specimens and natural history material and sample <coughs> event for uh, so, ito ay the data diretso galing from fieldworks and other observations. So, elaborate, to elaborate, so una yung taxon for examples are checklist. Kung kunwari, uh, checklist of uh, arthropods in Mount Makiling. So sa mga, sa taxon for, yung entry natin ng scientific name, once lang siya lumalabas. Kasi gusto lang natin malaman ano yung mga species na nandito sa certain area or certain event. So, example pa dyan ay yung Red List of Endangered Species. So, kung gusto natin mag-publish sa GBIF, meron lang tatlo minimum required na fields or uh, information. So, taxon ID, ito yung parang identifier niya. Number to na pag identify for the record dun sa uh, data na yun or dun sa isang entry. And then yung scientific name and taxon rap. So, scientific name yun. So, kung nari, meron mga, unpub meron mga unpublished tayo na catalogs, pwede natin yung i-encode, e i-data e capture, and then i-publish natin sa GBIF. So, next, uh, punta muna tayo sa sample event for These are derived from protocols for measuring, monitoring, and biodiversity. Monitoring biodiversity. So, kailangan kasama dun sa data natin ay yung methods. So, events, ano yung kumbaga yung environment. And saka yung relative abundance of species observed. So, this is useful for comparing similar data. So, kunwari, may mga protocol na sinunod na ginawa itong isang researcher from Africa and then tayo from Philippines. Gusto natin gamitin. Pag na-upload to or may mga iba pang uh, researchers from other areas na gumawa ng same protocol. Madali nila makakompare yung results. So, examples ito ay yung vegetation transect, bird census, uh, sampling or survey of specific taxon. So, yung required fields niya for Darwin Core fields para ma-publish sa GBIF. Yung event ID, so ito yung identifier ng event na yun. Event date, and kung ano yung sampling protocol na ginagawa. Okay? So, pero ang main uh, gusto natin ay yung sa occurrence score. Dito ba pasok yung museum collections. So, occurrence score data describes the location of individual organisms in time and space. So, ito yung nakikita natin dun sa mga labels and <coughs> catalogs na nasa museum specimens. So, ang importante dito is on the what, where, when, and how, and by whom of the occurrence and the recording. So, to further elaborate, these are resources which present evidence of recurrence of a species at a particular place and normally on a specified date. So, this data set expands on most checklist data because they contribute to mapping the historical or current distribution of a species. Kasali din dito yung mga fossil records. So, we also include coordinates, ideally. Kasi gusto natin mamapa yung occurrence record. Parang in. So, meron required na Darwin Core Fields para makapag-publish tayo sa GBIF. So, una yung occurrence ID, lagi ito kasi dapat merong identifier. And then, basis of record. Uh, example dyan is preserved specimens or observation. Pero dapat mas maganda kung preserved specimen. Tapos yung scientific name and event date. 
Pero mas maganda kung meron tayong tax and rank, kingdom, uh, so of course, yung decimal eh, latitude and decimal longitude. So, geodetic data, kung ano yung binamit na uh, format niya. Country code, so for Philippines, it's PH. And individ individual count, or quantity. So, nag-try ako mag- uh, Based uh, from database na ginagawa na namin sa museum, nag-try ako mag-standardize mag using Darwin for field. So, ito yung Bipas. Kulit na. Pero ganito yung itsura. So, ito gamit ko ay mites. So, ito yung occurrence ID. Occurrence ID. Occurrence ID. Then, based din siya sa catalog number ng museum. Kingdom, tapos yung taxon ram ito as species. Asin, tapos, nandun pa sa dulo yung mga ibang required fields. So, pag may mga, pag meron na tayong ganito, nasa Excel ko lang ito ginawa rin. So, or kahit gumamit tayo ng data capture software, hindi natin alam minsan na merong mga errors na pwede pa rin mangyari pag nag-encode tayo. So, meron tayo data cleaning and uh, standardization. So, tinuruan kami dun sa workshop, gumamit nito, open refine. Although, sa Microsoft Excel or similar software yung kung ano mga uh, operating ano natin, may, may mga gawa na using Excel. Pero mas maganda yung open refine. Dati, binili ko ng Google, eh. naging Google refine ko. Ano yun? Open refine siya. It's, it's an open source, libre siya to download para ma-download and desktop app. Kaso, nag, pag binuksan niyo yung program, nag-open siya sa web browser. Uh, it's similar to spreadsheet, pero hindi niyo siya magagamit for databasing. Para lang talaga siya to clean yung data. <coughs> Tapos, sa open refine, madali yung mag-filter ng data. Lalabas siya sa isang tab. Filter count out of that. And then, pwede niyo siyang i-edit or i-transform yung data entry kung may nakita kayong errors. Uh, simultaneously. So, interactive visualization. Medyo user-friendly naman siya. Pero, pag mayroon tayong gusto i-edit, it may require basic programming knowledge. Pero, mayroon namang mga manuals na nakikita nyo kung simple language na naman yung kailangan ipasok. So, ito yung isang example. From yung sa pinakita kong uh, Excel file spreadsheet kanina, ganito yung lalabas sa kanya sa uh, Open refine. So, if you filter siya into packet, pag kung ano yung mga entries within a column, example, kung sa locality, makikita nyo dito yung mga entries, lahat, mag-iisa-isa sa dyan. Pero, kung na ito, Forestry Campus, merong dalawang entries. So, makikita nyo kung na rin ito. Forestry Campus, Forestry Campus. Pag ganun, pwede mo nang edit kung saan lalabas kasi. May makikita ka, Forestry Campus pareho. Yung isa pala, may space siya sa bunhan sa kasalit na. So, open refine, merong isang parang one click lang, may edit na yun lahat. Lahat ng ganong errors. So, so sobrang uh, ano siya? Very useful for cleaning data. Kung gusto nyo i-check, merong but kung gusto nyo, meron akong cop, cop, pwede nyo yung kumok yan mamaya. So, meron pang other tools for checking data quality. So, okay, name parser, uh, global name resolver, resolver, <laughs> uh, yung coordinate conversion, Google Maps para malaman mo kung nasan ka ngayon. Uh, o kung saan yung masarap na ramen. <laughs> okay, so isa-isa yung ko. Name parser ito, kasi minsan may require na magkahiwalay yung uh, genus name and specific epithet sa database. So sa name parser, upload mo lang doon or paste mo lang yung lahat. Isang listahan kung narin ng scientific names. Diretso mo i-copy from uh, Excel file. And then, one click, ihiwalay nyo nyo. Pwede mo lang i-download. So ganun, kahit 100 entries pa yan. So, ito naman, global na yung resolver. Na-resolve ba sir yung mga... <laughs> Medyo gumugulo din na dito. Pero makikita mo dito, 
kung mayroong mga <coughs> kung may mga mga dubious na uh, names na minsan medyo matanda na hindi natin alam uh, sa global name resolver iisa-isahin niya yung mga web uh, sources mga wikis, wikis, ganyan kasi ililis na yun sa'yo tapos meron siyang scoring system kung gaano ka uh, reliable yung pinasok mo na name so ito rin, pwede rin, ano rin to from your excel file, ko, copy mo lahat ng scientific na yung face mo nun isa-isahin niya yun so mag maganda talaga to kung nagbibuild tayo sa malaking data sets as next in geology Well, this is used to georeference natural history collections data. So, ang maganda dito, i-enter enter natin yung kung ano yung nasa collections, collection data na nandun sa specimens, kunwari, sa isa. Pwede. Isa, isa, isa. Uh, Siyempre, pag in-encode nga natin, isa, isa. Pero pag nilagay natin yung sa geolocate, magbibigay siya ng coordinates kung nasan yung mga uh, nilagay natin na location. Pero ang medyo ano lang dito, di ba pag may coordinates tayo, meron tayong error. Pag nasa GPS tayo, usually plus 5, plus 10. Pag dito sa geolocate, yung kanyang error ay umabot ng plus 3,000. <laughs> <laughs> Pero at least meron kang coordinates na nandun. <laughs> pero pero, pero, pero di ba? Pero di ba kasi kung wari, pwede mo yung gamin eh, sa sarili mo na hanapin mo yung uh, hanapin mo yung coordinates or pinakamalapit for yun nga Los Banos. Pero kung, paano kung meron kang 1,000 na data, na entries? Sa geolocate, pwede ipasok mo lang doon lahat. Tapos magbibigay na siya yung coordinates, di ba? So kabalik tala naman nun, kung meron kang coordinates pero hindi mo alam kung kunwari, kung, 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 kunwari nasa medyo may boundary. boundary. Kunwari sa ano? Laguna Land Grant, uh, Laguna Quezon Land Grant. Boundary siya ng Laguna at Quezon. So, hindi mo alam kung nasan ka, kung nasan dito ang dito. Nakakuha ka ng um, coordinates, pwede mo ipasok dito sa info xy, sa listahan ulit yun. Then, magbibigay siya sa'yo ng uh, data on country, state, or region, and municipality or district. Minsan may barangay pa. Or kung kami ng bahay. Then, dito. So yun, very convenient din. So, pasok mo lang lahat ng uh, nasa listahan mo. Oh, matatapos na pala ako. Oh, last two. So, ito, yung Canadensis tool. So, itong isa, yung to convert coordinates. Kunwari, di ba usually yung isang minutes and uh, degrees minutes. So, makakonvert niya at sa decimal latitude and decimal longitude. Meron, meron di ba mga websites na pwede ka mag-convert? Pero isa-isa yun. So dito din, pasok na lang lahat ng data and then may table na siya. So meron din date parsing. So kung meron tayo iba't ibang format ng dates, pwede niyang ihawalay into year, month, and day, and dun sa format na tinatanggap sa GBI. So, yun. May questions pa? So far, kasi tapos na po ako. So far, ito po. Sir, yes. ano ba nila data yung pinilagay mo score or ganang project? Bawa, may maligay sa data mo. Tapos ma-register ko siya. Sa? Tapos sa database mo sa ano? Paano kung may mali? Kasi di ba mayroon kang i-input na coordinates, ganyan. Paano kung mali yung coordinates mo? Ano yung information na natin mo? Mara-recognize ka na? No, hindi po ma. Medyo sa syntax lang siya. Yung sa mga ganong information ay judgment na natin mo. Hindi talagang parang i-accept na nung pinig mo data o yung information that is right. Yun din yung isang... Yun din yung isang... Yun din isang parang... disadvantage na sa GBIF minsan, meron yung nakita kami, tama raw na nasa Mindanao. Yeah? Tama raw yung pens. Pero yun yun. Pero kung sa gagamit naman yun, nasa, nasa kanila na kung gagamit ko. Oh, Siyempre, judgment. Yes, sir? Pwede ko sa rin. When you map your coordinates, doon mo makakita pag mali. Kasi outlier siya. 
Pare, Philippines yung document mo, no? Tapos mayroong isa sa South America. Nag-zoom out, you look at, uh, may isang click na look at all data. Hmm. Pag zoom out yun, kung may isang wala sa Philippines. Tapos meron din. Meron ba sa South America pa? Hindi yun ay. Meron din naman ako lang sa dates. Sa dates sa year. Siyempre. Meron, meron sa Excel, kinari, ma, 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 masasort mo naman siya para may lumabas mo yung entry ka instead of 2008, kung nalil mo 2088. Ma, kung masort mo naman siya in 2008, lalabas man yun sa taas, so malalaman na natin na may mali. Pero, hindi natin alam kung ano siya original. Yes, sir. Just for example, um, nilalikord natin ng organism ng Google, si Arthur, Okay. Kasi kung sa plants, di ba, mas kailangan talaga natin ng specific location na kasi nandun lang naman siya. Mm-hmm. What if kapag halimbawa yung chinecheck natin ay arthropod, then isa lang yung nakita natin species sa lahat ng ginawa natin collection, then nandun siya sa isang lugar, gagamitan natin siya dito sa natin yung location. Oh, oh. Iko-consider ba natin yun na valid? Oh. Kasi pwede naman na baka napunta lang siya doon, or nasama lang siya doon sa damit mo. Okay. So, ang nire-record natin dito is occurrence. So, kung nag-occur talaga siya doon, kahit uh, by accident, so, sinasama natin so, siya. So, may required number na occurrence na kailangan? Additional data na yun. Additional data, yeah. Mm-hmm. Kahit accident siya, occurrence pa rin siya. Yung, yung yung description of occurrence data, yun yung tinatanong na, kailangan na how did occurrence data arrive at doon talaga siya o di nila siya doon. So, additional information. Yeah. You add more descriptions. Yeah. 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 Same kayo doon din sa appearance. Kasi yung encounter doon sa PC, merong mga appearances, pero di, hindi malukit kung saan yung mga siya. Like, pandakan ko yung sabi meron sa sa Cebu. Pero sinig ko kung sino yung sabi na wala siya makapag kung saan nakatipuhin yung Ah, suspension. 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 Ah, 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 Oh, minsan, minsan kasi merong mga may nagdi-database ay nag-inventory and kakatalog na naman yung mga museums dati pa. So, pwede yung nakasulat na yun. Naka, kahit, or kahit naka-encode na, naka, nakasulat na siya sa mga logbooks. Pero, i-record pa rin nila yun kasi occurrence record yun. Kahit wala na yung specimen, kung narin, i-load pa lang yung specimen kung saan siya napunta. Pero dahil naka-record siya, sinasama nila yun madalas sa... Okay lang yung ano, kahit observation nila sila? Oh, yung, yung, yung observations, dun siya minsan sinasama, dun siya sa sampling event form. So, mm-hmm. ibang klase yung data set naman yun. Yun yung difference nung... Kasi yung kami per, per museums, yung ginagamit namin sa ato, katulong sa akin. Nung before GPI, it was for me. So, lahat ng catalog na online ng museums having bird specimens, in-upload nila yun. There's only one database that puts that online from that age. In-absorb siya later ng BERTnet, and then BERTnet got absorbed by the PIN. So yun, that's it. Busy yun lang yun. Pero ito, ang GBIN, basta data. So it can be a current. Kaya nga yung eBird ang pinakamalaki dyan. Kasi maraming bird watchers naka-upload ng data nila. So kung yan, mabasa ko dyan sa Makiday, nakakita ko sa mga ibon, pwede na ako mag-upload sa eBird na. For today, ito yung, yung nakita ko. That's a current state of mind. Kasi po sir, yung sa ano, sa face piece po kasi, pag click mo yung occurrences, ito po yung nasa GBI. Ah. <laughs> kasi magkakalink lang din yan pati catalog of life. Sa GBI po yung po. Pero maano siya, it's more generalized yung GBI. Pati nga uh, genomes nandun. Sorry. Yes, sir. Ma'am. So in that case, kasi yung mga sa mga global taxonomy, So, the Philippines to put it in BM, in a document of GPs. Okay, yes, ma'am. Since when? Yeah. Because it's a typical word of the 
options po ng ganyan and uh, with database at that time, no, yung GP3, medyo, siyempre, uh, ano yan eh, pat, kung sino yung malakas din po. Pero I'm happy if there is if GP na talaga yung sa Philippines. So, could we say that? Uh, yung GP ay Philippines po sila. Uh, so, we could say that that is the preferred uh, um, it, I don't know. Ang, ang so, 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 Yon, pag na okay na tayo sa data and quality standards, ang gusto natin is ma-publish siya online through GBIF and also magpa-publish din tayo ng data papers na pinatawag to describe yung data set na pinapublish natin. Magandang opportunity yun to discuss with your data. Thanks! Yan, magandang umaga po. Tama-tama po kasi si Jeboy po kasi umatid ng first day, ako second day na po umatid. Kaya ko lang pwede ko sabihin. So yung pinasenta, yun din, ngayon ko lang hindi siya nakita. So isa sa points na hindi masyado na emphasize is when you put the data on, it has to be uh, case sensitive, space sensitive. So, may dog, may dalawang beses mo na pindog yung tab, uurong siya, mag, hindi na magtutog na yun. Kaya kailangan talaga nung sa open refine to correct yun. Um, Chaka spelling, of course. So, what do you do with the data that you want to upload? So, for this part, in part two, why do we need to publish the data? Why do we need to upload it? Um, what else can you do uh, in terms of the data itself? You can publish it as data papers. Because if it's not being published, you're just putting up online. Kano din matay pag nag Instagram, you're publishing your information online. So, it's just a blog. So, ito naman, publishing data papers is more uh, plus the form, formal publication. So, again, we're using the workshop um, slides that were presented during the uh, global biodiversity mobilization. It's the same, I discussed the other two. But I'll just repeat the other slides eh, just to, to remind you what it is. So, we're not doing biodiversity data mobilization, what it's for. And why do we need to share or put our data online? Um, so, one is you can use it for data papers, especially if you're using a lot of data sets, you metadata. And you want to compare your data also to a larger data set, the global. Actually, I had the opportunity to do that with my thesis, because Hornbills of the world yung ginawa ko. So, hindi lang Philippines yung inayos ko. Pati data uh, from Africa to the Solomon Islands. So it, it was amazing that the time na hindi pa siya GBIF, so that's more of birth net na nagahan ko. So, why do we need to share data? It's, it's likely na hindi mo naman mapapublish lahat yung data mo. Formally, so it's put, to put it out there para malaman ng mundo ano yung meron kayo natin, ano yung pinaginagagawa niya sa, sa inyong mga <coughs> Also, it's not for us to, then we don't have time to publish our own data. And it's also, it's a very limiting factor in putting our data together and putting it out there. So, buti na merong standardization, and it's easier for us to access. At the same time, meron ka din ma-access. Hindi lang naman access tayo na access, hindi naman tayo na interest to share. So, also, it not sharing reduces your publication opportunities because most people don't know what you're doing. So, nagkawa ka ng expedition, nagkawa ka ng report, yes, nasa either DOST format o nasa NPNB format, upo na lang yun dyan, tapos. Then you're not going to use it unless you publish it formally. At least, if you do it as a checklist, pwede mo siyang i-upload. Um, also, ayaw na nila yung tatawag ng data order. Ayaw mo maglabas ng data. And of course, if you do put out your data, it also encourages collaboration. And often, the what you put up online is cited. So data papers, in a sense, is a metadata document. Um, it is particular to a particular set of data set or group of data sets. It's often uh, published uh, under peer review. 
Although it's not the conventional research article na hindi siya ginagawa natin. Mas, mas mabilis siya, mas maikli pati siya. So also takes effort to prepare, curate, and describe uh, data. So mas mabuti na, if you look at it in a, as a scholarly article, medyo, parang hindi siya catalog list. Mm -hmm. So you're putting out a checklist, or you're putting out the catalog of all the specimens available in your museum. O kahit kung nag bird watching ka, gusto mo mag-publish, dapat mo siya. Pero pwede na sa e-bird. So only purpose and benefit. So it's a citable uh, journal publication talaga. Of course, para sa mga teachers and staff, pang dagdag sa promotion. <laughs> it's also in a, a standard readable form. Human readable. Non human readable form. <laughs> <laughs> also, it brings uh, attention to your, uh, your work to the scholarly community, increased visibility, reusability, and credibility. Of course, it's all tracked and cited. So, here's an example of those data papers. This is in Fauna. Electronic catalog of known Indian fauna. So, this is just a uh, catalog list of Indian fauna. So, this gets all the occurrences of species, fauna, so how we extent of fauna is, and all over India. That's a very large data set. Um, for publishing, pro the process for publishing, or they're putting out your data online, um, you have your, I'm going to describe the Jebrit and email. Not no required fields, you have your metadata, your taxonomic data, your current data. Meron naman minimum standard eh. Um, you can just, actually for your minimum. Or, so, so. Bahala na kayo magdagdag. Iba, as in, there's a one page, ang dami-dami na information, parang sariling uh, species account list na siya. But again, it depends on your own report of your data. And of course, it goes through that standardization tool, um, integrated publishing toolkit, as a processor, which of course cleans out all the errors, and of course, you have your standardized system of uh, putting up the fields using Darwin for. We have in all these other community tools. We explain yung di yung pagdiri na mga pagayos ng coordinate, and then you publish your data, put it out there. Of course, you don't necessarily publish agad. You can still hold it and review it until they're ready to publish. Well, in addition, you can put it sa GBIF network, and of course, everybody can use it by just googling. And then you discover it for that everybody can use it. So here's an example of the integrated publishing toolkit. So this is an example for how many would have some slide. Metadata. But these are just a set of how you're going to put in your data. So it's a description of all the data that was put together in terms of the harvest and the French Vienna. Um, so there will be descriptors like as well as the resource links, keywords, and of course a summary describing a mean dynamic in terms of how the data was put up together. So when one is published, you can regular kaba naga update. So nagiging parang page siya in GBI. So it's facilitate authoring of metadata and author generation of an actual data paper manuscript. So it helps you build up and arrange your data. Especially if you need to know what to do in the text list, you can use it to map it. This is automatic. Since you have your coordinates, it can also map it. Of course, nowadays, there are many journals which are more focused on publishing data papers. So biodiversity data journal is one of them. Nature conservation, these are all PENSOF. PENSOF is actually focusing on that. But they have also a toolkit on editing. So there are actually online additives in the whole system that helps you and guides you and makes everything standardized and also accessible. So other PENSOF publications, PENSOF, PENSOF, and so, okay, so I don't know what the taxon groups are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is scientific data by Springer, or Springer Nature, of course, it will publish as Nature. So, it's a high-end data paper. 
Siguro din kaya, pag nagkaroon ba kasi siguro ng nature paper. Pwede na akong, hindi uh, kong gawin tayo, kagwapa ko siya pa. Kasi <laughs> ay, pwede na akong mamatay na kakita ko ng blue whale. Pwede pa titiguli ako na isa pa. <laughs> so, if the data sets that are suitable for publishing a data paper, or so anything which is bigger, giant, ultra, mega <laughs> data, um, if it's the first data set of its kind, especially in mga rare uh, taxa, hindi mo siya na naaral, uh, entire data is of a particular institution, so the museum can do that, or any other project that are specific, especially kung malaki yung uh, area na sinuscope the project na. So a lot with uh, geographic or taxonomic focus, species, invasive species. Um, also, bear in mind the publishers of data papers are also looking to improve their publication ratings and metrics. So, kung maganda yung uh, paper nyo, o maganda yung scope ng paper nyo, then we would help add to that citation. Kasi magagamit eh. Usually that's our approach is not just limiting ourselves to one area, but also trying to be more global in approach. Just to become more cited, and of course, maganda yung paper. Publishing using integrated publishing <laughs> toolkits. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. several slides to it. So for example, since I became BirdNet, she had absorbed no ornis, which is purely bird specimens, and then BirdNet of course looked into all fish, uh, reptiles, and even birds and mammals. It is still existing up to now, but now you can easily access that through. Okay. <laughs> 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 Oh, bathroom break for just a little bit. So, naka-site naman yun sa uh, kung ano institution yung upload. Also, you can limit the data that you want to put out. So, if you don't want to put out the entire project, you can just put out the current data. Pero ba siya sir tinatawag na parang coding lang? Parang you can, uh, uh, you can input as many information as you could, but you can only limit uh, data that can be uploaded and shared to other members of the network. Actually, it says, i-prepare mo muna yung data mo. Uh -oh. So, bago mo siya i-upload, hindi pa rin kahit naka- Parang yung area ka, parang Naka-upload pa rin siya, pero hindi pa siya- Accessible. Accessible. So, yung mga- So, ready there in the, in the Google Play. Parang may protect. Hindi mo lang binu binibigyan ng access. So, And, only you can access. Yeah, kasi kahit kailangan mo siya i- uh, Kailangan mo siya i-review, i-edit. So, kasi manage resources. Meron naman mong pwedeng i-isama ng input, sir. But you can still input to on-set oh, as part of your data. Oh, because you don't have to input. It's very interesting. Okay. Oh, you can specify what data you have in your input. So if a lot of um, fields, um, but what you want to do is the basic core. Oh, basic core. Okay. So you can do that. through them. So again, it is a, the, the, the data you're publishing has to be a data that is accessible, discoverable, and in standard form. So, para madaling ma-access. Kasi yun lang naman ang um, habol ng GBIF is to standardize and make it easier for us to access data that are similar. So, for example, ako, kailangan ko maghanap ng hornbill specimens from around the world. So, gusto ko lang malaman nasa yung <coughs> Anong museum ang may hornbill specimen, then it just then then GPI will give out that data and list down all the museum specimens. Pag nakalit dun sa particular uh, uh, keyword, nandiyan nagyay mo dun sa search. 
So, ganun din naman. As you use it, tingnan mo din kung anong data na pwede mong ilagay. So, if you're looking for, say, like, the keyword itself, then dapat nandun din yung data. Kung hindi siya magagamit for that particular purpose. So, kung walang English din, yung pinasok niyo na taxon na currents, di pag nag-search siya ng horn bill, walang lalabas kung sa data. Di ba? Kaya nga gusto nila i-ano yun. Kaya may specific fields that connect each other. And it also maps each other within uh, the system. Ah, kasi mag- Hindi, lumabas yung... Lumabas. Lumabas yung project eh. Iba yun, iba yun naman basta dito. Nag-tang? Kayo na kayo. <laughs> Sabotage. Sabotage. <laughs> so this is the example for the integrated publishing tool kit. Uh, this is from ACB. Sila yung nagpahiram muna ng toolkit nila. So you need to be a member. Kaya yung mag-sign in muna for, to be able to access that toolkit. Ang papaalam kayo. Doon sa may-ari din ng toolkit. Node na yun. Ideally, by institution yung node. Pero ang po generally should be DNB, which is the government side of the, the access. So the ACB is also for So it's easier for us here kasi andyan na ACB. So, only yung posted resources available for this? So, the time, ano pa wala? No resources available. So, dapat dapat nakapasa kayo online. Hindi kayo nakakabit sa internet. Hindi nyo ma-access. Kasi online siya umanda. Just needs a stable connection. Na, na, dami na. Okay, wala na. 3G. So, this is the test mode. Actually, lahat pala ko test mode. So, ito yung pag sinabi mo, manage resources. So, gusto mo i-input yung data mo, you want to review and edit it. So, you go to manage resources, and then lalabas yun. So, sabi you want to create a new resource. You add in the needed data. And then, the source data. Kung naka-excel file na siya, yun nga, kung natapos mo siya i-open refine, then you can upload the source data. And of course, you need the Darwin core mappings. Yeah, Darwin core mapping. Kasi siya yung specific field na magko-connect dun sa, uh, sa input nyo. At siya parang may specific language nga siya nang ginagamit. Eh. Kaya pansin nyo din, one word siya. Event ID is one word. Mm -hmm. So yun yun, yun yung mga so, mapping na. Mapping in sense na, dinidikit-dikit niya yung connections between the data, so the, the data you put into, into the field. Mm -hmm. Mas, uh, um, but it's one to one, many to one, so only connections on different fields. No, we're not talking about it's an indefinite connection, like in countries. Ano na yung pwede mo ilagay pati ng field? So, hindi rin na yung So, you control the, the style of your data input as well. Okay. So, here is your metadata. So you can actually view your metadata together. We also have all the I mean, taxonomic coverage. See, the summarize at some point when basically the data. And associated parties and some of the methods, um, geographic coverage. And then some interesting part then would be about licenses. I thought it was not creative commons. You also have to describe any uh, license you know, for, for using that data or putting out your data. Sensitive by data now. So you have to check anong saan siya pasok sa creative commons. Kasi once you put it online, it's free. So merong may good access, may bad access. You have to be sure ano yung public domain na ginagamit. Kote hindi ko siya pinabasa masyado. Differences of the creative commons. But it's for us to Ganun naman tayo, di ba? So would you like to tar accept the terms and condition? Have you read the road either? No, accept not. Accept. Ah, so kita tapos pa lang na binibenta na pala kaluluan. Yan, sir, yung big busy. Ayan. Ito na yung, once you're done and 
you're happy with your map, your your date, your resources, but then you na siyang e publish. Dun siya magiging the same. So make the same. Ipin do ten. And of course, you can check whether on your visibility niya, would you like to have it public, or would you like to limit it to a certain group, or to the institution itself. Yeah, we have a bunch of auto publishing. So it actually, um, I think people have done that. We discussed it. Publishing stuff. Ah, you publishing stuff. Auto publishing. I'm just connected to auto publishing. Publishing resource. Publishing status. And it's all related to how you. Export your data out into GBI. So, can you have this is about a data paper? So, once a data set is published, you can also have a digital object identifier to the ship people will refer to. <coughs> Unless you have, yeah, want to publish it. Can you have someone that I publish? Then you can take it to the resource. If you have a bike, you Na ayos man na yung publication mo. So the data that provided when a data set is published to GBIF forms the basis for the content of your data paper. Of course, once you can use the different um, summarization tools within GBIF, kung siya nang ng summary, and then you can also use uh, yung ARPA writing tool, yung tensor writing tool, ARPA writing tool, yung yung gamit lang, the auto tensor piece of the world. So dito nakapag-try ng ARPA. Yung mga nag-publish sa by the day, by the diversity data journal, yung a BCSP. Kasi yung last BCSP ng Ateneo mission, lahat yun ay sponsored ng tensor. So you're required to understand ARPA writing tool. <laughs> So you don't need a template, your metadata can be written directly into your metadata sections. The Word document can also be extracted from your ARPA writing tool. As well as your science data, your know, data paper from nature. So it is all connected together. So these are data paper sections from your introduction, your project description, your sample <coughs> methods, and geographic coverage, and add in temporal coverage as well as the collection data. Yes, That's not it. That's it. Report all the other data resources, especially on the use and license. On the IP right note scale, you have the NCIP. And all the additional information. Basically, it's the same as a, a article, pero mas mas hindi ka nung ka ano? Ano yung analysis? And I think that's it.